Are you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt slinging and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan here. Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Racer, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR IndyCar? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning. Welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, kicking off a massive show today. Uh, sometimes yeah. when it rains, it pours, and seems like all the interviews, like, I don't know. My, my day is so weird. It's like roller coasters on the day or two before uh, we book, as we're booking out the show and people falling in place. And weeks like today, everything falls in place. Indy 500 champion. He went down and raced Race of Champions with Travis Pastrana here this past weekend. Uh, Alexander Rossi is going to be on the show. Um, we've also got, man, just a slam packed guest lineup. Um, Patrick Sandell, brand new Subaru yeah. Rally Team USA driver, just inked to a deal with Factory Subaru. He's on the line. We got my buddy Andreas Bakarud, Monster Energy athlete, Ken Block's teammate, running in World Rally Cross. And then we got a good friend of Amy's, current points leader, the guy that's uh, got you down a notch. Uh, uh, <laughs> Justin Sipes, he's on air. So it's going to be a fun one, Hood. Yeah, I'm excited. We got what a what a wicked lineup of guests we have today. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, again, a, a little bit of everything from all different types of motorsports. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely uh, definitely going to be fun. Looking forward to that. We also got a clip, a uh, new thing we're going to call Killer Clips. We're going to air with Paul Thacker here in hour number two. So uh, hang tight. It's going to be one heck of a show. We'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500 or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. 
For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, getting uh, rolling here. I want to give my token shout out to my other show, Project Action, on Podcast One. Make sure and go over there, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. I am actually following back anybody who de- leaves a review on iTunes and puts your Instagram or Twitter at username. I will follow you back. But you got to go to Project Action on iTunes to do it. Uh, I had Paul Thacker on last week uh, talking X Games, Winter X, his medals. We're going to air a new segment called Killer Clip in hour number two with an interview, uh, with the portion of that interview. But uh, good times with Paul Thacker. He's over there. He's getting ready to... Uh, Go for uh, go for gold here in a couple of days, Hood. Yeah, I know, and I mean, if anybody can throw down, I know it's it's Paul for sure. So, yeah, he was. Uh, good luck to him, definitely. Yeah, he was showing me some uh, when we were together up in Minnesota. He was showing me some video on his iPhone, and I don't know where what they're going to do with the video, but it was of him. And to keep in mind, he's an adaptive, you know, snowcross guy now, and I mean, it, mm-hmm. his skills are still insane. But you never he... know. You never know because no. of how like insane he is still. You know, at anything that he does, <laughs> yeah, nothing really like stops him. Yeah, so they were at, so they were, and I can't remember if they were in Alaska or where they were at, but there was this hit. It was like a natural hit out there, and they were kind of doing some stuff in the backcountry and things like that. And he got full on sled neck style, and um, he was like one of the one of the only guys, and one of the first ones to hit it. But it was like a two hundred foot gap, and here's Thacker just sending it on his snowmobile and most of these guys like you know like they had somebody go and i can't remember i think it was like heath frisbee or something and then thacker hit it and uh, landed and everybody's like dude that's insane and everything else and thacker goes i think it can go bigger and like everybody's getting scared so like some of these guys would only hit it once and then they were done they just wanted to hit it say they did it thacker hit it like eight or nine times Uh, (laughs) he was showing me the video though hood it was so (laughs) massive this jump it was just insane i'm like you're nuts thacker that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he has no fear. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I think Alaska, in, in all honesty, breeds, like, the craziest athletes. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're up in the middle of nowhere. All they got to do is, like, play in the snow or, you know, like, yeah. like everybody that I know from Alaska is a really extreme talented athlete. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean. Uh, have have I you seen the movie that, Mystery Alaska? Is, but have you seen the movie Mystery Alaska? So. Huh? It, 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 yeah, it's called Mystery Alaska. It's about this hockey team from yeah. like nowhere, Alaska, right? Well, there's a line in the movie, and it's my favorite line, like in all movies. And it goes, you, they, everybody, they, like uh, Sports Illustrator is interviewing one of the guys in the town, and he goes, he goes, why, why are you guys so good at hockey up here? And he goes, because there's only a few things to do in Alaska in the middle of the winter. And he's like, you eat, drink, fornicate, and play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I guess you can throw snowmobiling in the mix too, right? So <laughs> yeah, I think you, you snowmobile too. So yeah, so I don't know. I I don't even know how we got headed in that direction. But uh, anyways, Thacker killing it. Uh, pump for him. Winter X snow bike's going to be debuting. So uh, I don't know a lot of. Uh, a lot of stuff coming up uh, this weekend with X Games. I know you guys are on tour. We'll catch up about that later. Yeah. I know, but you got close. You said you almost uh, took your first event, like overall victory, right? I almost took it from Justin Fipes this weekend, but I got a hand hands down. I mean, he's pretty darn talented in the truck. He knows how to do some crazy walking wheelies where he like throws it in reverse. Like 
it's insane. And, um, I mean, he had a little bit of a hometown advantage. I mean, he's from Louisville, Kentucky. So the, he had a huge Megalodon crowd on the weekend. It was absolutely insane. But, you know, he still didn't just win over the crowd vote. He's an extremely, extremely talented driver and definitely earning that top spot in the Central Tour right now. Um, he has some skills in the truck and definitely in the races as well. But I have to say I am still winning the overall wins for the ATV racing. And I know that hits a soft spot with Justin because he's obviously, you know, comes from a Supercross background. I was going to say he's a moto guy. He gets really mad. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, they have all these events, you know, and we've talked about it before. But, like, I mean, there's got to be some, like, everybody kind of excels at certain things. Obviously, you're good on the ATVs. Um, you're good in, like, the donuts too, right? Like, I mean, there's is there certain things where you mm-hmm. just kill it? Yeah, I've um, I've been killing it in the ATVs. I have the most wins, and I have the most wins in donuts as well. But I'm I'm really trying to work. Like I'm really feeling more comfortable and confident in the Monster Jam truck, and I think really that's going to be my best asset because it's fan voted, like wheelies, freestyle, everything but the Monster Truck Racing yeah. is fan voted. So if you're a great driver and also can win over the fans, and I think I have a little bit of an advantage over that. If anybody knows me, I am, you know, all about the fans. I'm definitely a show show woman. So I think, you know, I think that's going to be a really big advantage for me. And and I'd like to think that, you know, you start up at the top, all you got is a target on your back. So, you know, Justin's winning right now, and all, all he can do is try to hold it there, where all we can do is try to progress and, and you know, chase that top spot. So I think, uh, I think being in third is really comfortable right now. I'm third in points um, behind Megalodon and Pirate's Curse, so Camden Murphy, who we had on the show earlier. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. It's going pretty pretty awesome, Jim. Yeah, it's I, I'm kind of like I wish there was some kind of live streaming. Like it's so crazy because like I'm I know I talked to you. I think I was watching Supercross, but I talked to you right after you got done. I think Saturday night at uh, at the races or something like that. But like I, I I so like I'm antsy. Like seriously, like I'm like oh I wonder how Amy's doing. Like it's hard to keep track. You know, it's like dang. Um, I know. I know. Well, I wish there was a little bit more coverage, and I really got to like stalk social media after the shows to try to find like people who, who took videos in the stands and there's not the best coverage i mean obviously grave digger gets tons everyone records christmas runs because it's grave digger yeah. and uh yeah i wish someone would record my freestyle because i'd like to throw it up on the up on social media and show you guys what i'm what i'm doing now yeah for sure so anybody out there who goes to a monster jam show seriously uh uh, ping Amy with your clips, man. I saw, I was bummed. Like, I was looking at the Monster Jam schedule. Like, I've really looked into this since you've been, uh, you know, on tour. Man, they're actually going to Winnipeg, and you're not running there. I'm like, oh, such a bummer. I know. You know how many text messages I have got of people either wanting tickets, wondering if I'm going to be in Winnipeg, why I'm not in Winnipeg. They don't understand, like... You know, there's so many different tours going on, and I'm still really fortunate to be on the U.S. tour. It's great coverage. Uh, you know, it's, I like to go to places I've never been before, so I've never been to Louisville, Kentucky. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't have a hometown advantage. Every other person on my tour has a hometown spot that they, we get to go and drive in, except for me. So <laughs> it kind of sucks. So I got to work like extra hard <laughs> yeah. to try to get those fan votes because uh, I ain't from here. <laughs> yeah. It's, I got, I got to tell you, there is an advantage to it. Cause like, you know, once or twice a year, like here in a week, I've got my first trophy truck race of the year and it's in my backyard. Right. So I get extra media attention. I'm on the local radio stations. I'm on, you know, yep. I've already done interviews with the local newspapers for for stuff dropping next week. Like there is a bit of a hometown advantage. Like I take off the start line in downtown Parker and uh, people are just going nuts. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, like, it's cool to be able to experience that. If you haven't been able to compete, you know, at a high level in front of your hometown crowd, I'm sure it's the same way with Supercross when, you know, like Dungey goes to Minnesota or something and races in Minneapolis, oh, it's you know? It's, uh, well, and then the, 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 all the, the MCs, like our hosts, play it up. You know, I want to I be like John. John Sapinero is our host. I want to be like, John, stop it. Like, you are killing my vibe here because he'll, he'll get on the microphone and – He'll be like, Lowville, your hometown boy, Justin Sipes, driving Megalodon, who, like, you know, he shouts out to the crowd, 
like antagonizes them to cheer him on. And obviously <laughs> he gets that bad decibel meter just raging. And I'm sitting there like, like kicking myself. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Like, it's a... Uh, it's really, 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 really cool to see how devoted and engaged and just dedicated the fans are. And then you throw in the hometown kid and it's just on a whole new level. And that's what I just love about Monster Jam and any live entertainment, like how insane the, the crowd goes is just, it's something I've really never experienced and to be a part of it and to be somebody that the crowd actually cheers for, like oh, pinch me. I love it. It's, it's surreal and I'm super, super, super grateful. All right. Well, we got to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We come back. My buddy Andreas Backrood, Ken Block's teammate, World Rallycross driver, Monster Energy athlete. He is on the line after this break. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race ready off road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the Wall of Death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance, rally-prepped, all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my next guest, a uh, guy. It's been a while since we've had him on air, Andreas Bakarud. How's everything going, Andreas? Hello, hello. It's great. Just perfect. Just getting ready for a new year in uh, World Rally Cross. Yeah, I That's think a kid, so it's gonna be good. Yeah, I think last year. Um, I can't remember last time I talked to you. I think it might have been before this big announcement with Ken Block, which I think is right around a year since everything became public. Right? It's yeah, like right, think, at, right at the anniversary. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been, and it's uh, yeah, and uh, it's one year ago since uh, we announced it. So uh, yeah. Pretty much a year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, take us through everything. I mean, uh, 
you know, this big announcement uh, made with Ken Block, now all of a sudden you're part of, uh, you know, Hoonigan Racing. I mean, you know, that was a big switch for you, Ken, going over to Europe. I mean, uh, you know, how did this whole thing come about? And take us through last year. I mean, you had a, a really good season, I think finishing, what, third in points. Uh, you know, you had a solid effort. Uh, you know, what are we looking forward to uh, this next season? Yeah, well, last year was, was really great. I mean, uh, first of all, the Ford Performance, uh, Hoonigan Racing Division, and M Sport still are, an amazing Ford Focus RS RX, uh, which we used in the World Rally Cup Championship. Uh, for sure, it was a new car in a new team, uh, in a new championship for everyone, and um, it didn't start uh, the way we wanted, maybe, but uh, we were developing all the time, and uh, from the mid-season and uh, till the end, we took the most points of uh, all drivers, and uh, finally, our in the last race, we managed to get top three in the championship. So, uh, yeah, it was, was a great year, uh, and we learned so much. We, we hopefully can use this year. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're going to start testing race, uh, soon and uh, hopefully get an even better year, 2017. Yeah, well, and, you know, you were in a good car before with uh, when you were with Olsberg and, and uh, the other Andreas, but, uh, you know, compare the, the Fiesta you were driving to the new RSRX, because a lot of people go, oh, maybe it looks similar, but it's a completely different car. Yeah, it's very, very different. Uh, and, I mean, uh, there is two different types of uh, philosophy around how to build a car. The Ford Fiesta I was driving with Olsberg had a sensitive, uh, and... Uh, Inline engine gearbox uh, and uh, M Sport Ford Focus RS RX uh, has this uh, transverse engine and uh, gearbox without center disc, and it's two very different way of driving it. Uh, the Fiesta you need to be more brutal with, and uh, RX you need to be a bit gentle with. <laughs> Yeah, did it take you some adjusting time to to learn how to drive in the in the new M Sport car? Yeah, for sure. It, it always takes uh, a long time to, to get to know your vehicle and to push it to the limit. And uh, that was the main thing. We didn't have much testing before the uh, last season started. Um, so uh, we kind of had to learn on races and uh, start pushing from from the beginning and uh, go outside the box and push, uh, yeah, push it hard. Yeah. So uh, coming into this season, you feel like, I mean, uh, you know, like you said, finished top three in points. You guys had a lot of momentum uh, at the end of last season. You feel like this is the year you and Ken put it together as a team and uh, and make a run for the title? Yes, we definitely want to. Our goal is to, to, to win the team championship. And, you know, we, we, we really want this. And uh, Ford is backing us very, very much uh, together with Monster Energy. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we we're gonna give it a go and uh, and hopefully we can finish up there somewhere uh, and hopefully take the team championship. That's, yeah. uh, that's the main thing. Yeah. Well, how's it been for you the past year? I mean, uh, you know, you were with Olsberg and they're they're a proper race team and and obviously Hoonigan Racing is a proper race team, but uh, the cultures around the race team are much different. I mean, you know, now you're here with with Ken, who is uh, you know one of the most followed guys in, in action sports and motorsports on social media. You know, he's got this massive fan following. You've got your massive fan following over there in Europe. I mean, how has this last year been? I mean, it seems like, you know, you guys are racing and doing well, but you're also having a lot of fun. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, Ken Block uh, as a teammate and uh, a little boss, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, he's, uh, he's uh, generally very, very good good guy. Uh, I learned so much last year. And I think both of us fit well together. We we have the same mindset about uh, uh, our fans. So last year I brought in 1,067 uh, people to different events in my Backyard Blue Supporter Club, which was really, really cool uh, all around the world. Um, it was a massive year for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, it seems like it's just growing bigger and bigger. Uh, and I learned so much from Ken and uh, the whole team. Uh, so uh, hopefully this year is just going to continue that way. Yeah, well, and I know uh, you're just uh, in Park City recently. What, you were at the Sundance Film Festival. You give, you've been able to take, uh, take in a lot of things maybe you haven't uh, hadn't been able to take in in the past, huh? Yeah, it's great. I mean, like, 
I, I've been here for a week and I'm on my way. Uh, I'm actually at the airport uh, now, on the way to Arizona. Uh, but uh, the the last weekend now in in Park City have been really great. Uh, we call it team bonding, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's um, highlight might be snow cat uh, skiing, and um, yeah, it's just been great. Yeah. Well, speaking of team bonding, I know. Tons uh, of great snow. Yeah, I know you got to go to uh, Jim Connor Grid and and run the Escort this past uh, into last year, right? How was that? I love that car. It's it's insane. Like the R S two thousand or the Jim Connor Escort is. Uh, so my dad and my uncle used to drive Radicals uh, back in the days, and my dad had a a Mark II Escort, and for me to get to drive the Jim Connor Escort, it uh, it was a absolutely great feeling and uh, a pleasure to drive it. Uh, in Kana, grid was insane. It was really good. So much, uh, so many cars and so many uh, different drivers um, from all around the world. It was great to compete against them. And yeah, we just had a great time in, in Greece. Uh, it was really nice. Yeah. Well, and I got to ask, uh, I know recently, uh, you know, speaking of that, you, you went and did your first stage rally, correct? I know you're a rallycross guy, one of the top guys yeah. in the world, but you went and did your first <laughs> stage rally. How was that? It was really cool. I had two days of testing before the rally, which was really great. And then uh, we showed up for the rally, and unfortunately, a fuel pump issue uh, already from service to stage one. So I didn't get to do the rally, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully, I'm, I'll be driving last weekend in February in Norway in winter roads, like proper proper rally. Yeah. Well, now now you get to hear what uh, Petter and Ken and everybody have been bragging about, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's crazy. Like when you when you're being able to trust your own face notes and uh, uh, feel committed to to whatever the co driver is saying, then uh, that's a very very nice feeling. Yeah. Well, and how does that compare? I mean, you're a guy who's uh, you've been a spotter. You you you've had spotters before. How, how has that changed now with the pace notes? I mean, because you've relied on spotters, but now you're relying on a guy in the seat next to you who uh, you know it's 100 percent trust in that person. Yeah, I have to say, like that's the hardest thing for me to to learn, uh, like get the information, process it, and then do it. You know that. Uh, that takes time to learn, and uh, I still have a long way before I'm a, a good rally driver. Uh, I, I think I was still quick on the test, but uh, to do new stages and uh, and roads all the time, uh, you need a lot of testing and uh, training to to be able to understand all the notes all the time. If you do one mistake, you're off. Yeah. So uh, between now and the start of the rallycross season, I mean, what uh, what's what's the schedule look like for Andre- Andreas Backerud? I mean, uh, a lot of testing. I know you said you were going to do a stage rally, but I'm sure you just got to get the cars up to speed. And uh, any major changes this off season to the cars? Yeah, I mean, like uh, it's going to be super busy until uh, the season starts in Barcelona last March and first of April. Uh, I have lots of testing with the uh, Focus RX, and I have. Go kart training camp in Belgium. I have uh, rally, and I just bought my first apartment, so I'm probably <laughs> need to move in there some sometimes. Yeah. You're an adult <laughs> so, uh, finally. Yeah, it's gonna be super busy. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I, I actually saw on the calendar today that the third week in March is still open. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be busy, but I like it that way. I like to travel. I like to experience new stuff, and uh, I I'm enjoying life. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Andreas, to, to call into the show. Uh, you know, you know, good luck this new season. And uh, you and I, we got to catch up more often. And I don't know, maybe I got to make a trip up to one of yeah, the rallycross races or something. I don't know. I've been talking with the guys over there, maybe the Canada RX <laughs> round or something. I don't know. Lyndon Hill. I don't know. We'll, f- we'll figure I it out. I can't wait till you call me after I win the championship and you, uh, you make Made it, made the interview done. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'll make you a promise. The All first, right. your first win this year. I'm gonna send you a text as soon as you win and say, Andreas, we're getting you on the show, right? So it's my promise. Oh yes, I'm in. <laughs> All I'm right, in. thanks Thank a you. lot, Andreas. You take All it right. easy. Have safe travels, my friend. Always fun catching up with Andreas Backerud. Uh, 
I, you know, I've had conversations on, uh, you know, multiple times on this show, on Project Action with people around Rallycross. And uh, Backroot is like literally one of my favorite guys in the sport of Rallycross. And uh, I've always said, like, I always feel like obviously he's killing it in World Rallycross, but I've always felt I'm like, man, this is one of the guys that can come over to the United States. And uh, I really think that. Uh, uh, you know, the U.S. and uh, fan base for Rallycross over here would really take to him. And I know he's come over. I think he did a lights run around a couple years ago or something like that. But uh, I've always felt like, you know, obviously now Ken Block noticed it. I mean, the guy's charismatic. Um, you know, he's an amazingly talented uh, uh, Rallycross driver. Like, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm so pumped for him to be teaming with Ken Block. I think their personalities gel well. Uh, he's a perfect fit for that team, and, uh, you know, and they're just blowing up. I mean, had a heck of a, a debut season. I mean, Ken Block is learning the tracks over there in Europe, and, uh, you know, everything's going to come together, and I think uh, uh, they're going to be killer this year in 2017. But uh, we got to take a short break. We come back. Alexander Rossi, Indy 500 champ. He is on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at CaseyHighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey Highlights. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here waiting on uh, Indy 500 champ Alexander Rossi to call in. Should be phoning in any minute and uh, looks like this is him let me see if we can uh, pick him up here hey how's everything going alexander 
good. How are you doing? Ah, doing well, my friend. Doing, uh, doing well. Thanks a lot for calling in, man. Hey, uh, things are, uh, can you, uh, I don't know. It seems like phone line is kind of breaking up a bit. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can clear things up here. Um, all right. Should, uh, should be good. I think hopefully, <laughs> uh, man, uh, you know, this weekend race of champions that, uh, um, dude, that's, uh, you're kind of a little bit out of your wheelhouse. How's things down there in Miami? All right, you there? You there, Alexander? We're having a problem. Oh, now we're crystal clear, man. Things, I don't know, we just had a bad connection there, so I don't know what was going on. Um, No, man, uh, you know, congrats first off on uh, heading down there to uh, Miami to Race of Champions. Uh, How was everything down there? Yeah, it was good, man. Um, I didn't didn't really know what to expect going down um, because, you know, it was just something that is is a very specific format obviously but but once we got started on friday um it was pretty clear that it was it was a pretty amazing event and uh you know some days were better than others saturday wasn't a great day for us but sunday was was pretty solid um and it was all in all an awesome event and great to have it finally be um you know at a venue in the u.s and and miami and marlins park were were great hosts well, and, you know, that being said, I mean, uh, you know, this is a race of champions. I mean, this has had to be kind of fun for you. Obviously, you know, you, you've gone over, you've raced in Europe. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, uh, uh, you know, seeing a lot of these drivers, you probably haven't seen them in a year or so. But, uh, I mean, this is kind of a big deal, kind of being anointed by the U.S. to kind of go and uh, represent the country. And, uh, you know, and, and then there's so many various types of racing, you know, mixed in. It had to have been uh, kind of a good feeling and uh, probably some faces you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, it was it was very cool to see a lot of guys that, that I hadn't seen in in a while, and and obviously, you know, I, I've made a lot of new, you know, connections and and, and friendships um, on the U.S. side of things. So it was great to kind of just be together with everyone in in a pretty low key environment. I mean, obviously, once you know you're on track, you're 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 driving at 100 percent because it's you know there's a lot of pride on the line. But you know, off track, everyone was was just having a good time with each other and. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the various types of racing, and, and that was something I didn't even know was a part of it. I I didn't know until we showed up Friday for practice that we were in anything different than one car. So it was um, it was very, very cool, and it, it definitely re- rewarded the guys um, that could adapt the best. And, you know, I want to say that, you know, it, it rewarded the guys that had been there before, but then won, won went and, and won everything on, on his first go-around. So <laughs> that kind of... Uh, was 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 very impressive and, and glad that he was able to represent you know the the Verizon Car Series while doing that. Yeah, well, and Juan, he's just uh, he's just an all world talent, man. It seems like anything they throw him behind the wheel of, he's uh, he's been successful. That's with. exactly right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you know, let's talk about uh, you know talk about uh, you know IndyCar. I know you know you're one of the few American drivers. It seems like every you know there's a, there's every once in a while there's a guy that you know the U.S. driver that goes to Europe and they try and make a go in Formula One, and it seems like it's so few and far between. But you were one of the guys. I mean, you got to got to race and compete in some Grand Prix. I mean, um, you know, how was that? You know, coming back to the United States, how was the experience in Europe? And I mean, was it was it uh, was it tough for you to make the decision to come back to the states? Um, yes and no. So, I mean, it was, it was my goal from, from when I was 10 years old that I wanted to go race in Formula One. So, you know, Europe was always going to be the destination that I was going to head to if I got the opportunity and, and I wanted to commit as much time, you know, learning how to drive, um, over in Europe because I knew that, um, you know, you have to go through the, the European junior formula in order to even be considered. I mean, you just kind of have to go through their process. Yeah. So, um, that, that was always the goal from, from the beginning and uh, finally achieving that last year after 15 years and, and, you know, quite a few kind of false starts, if you will. I mean, there was a lot of times where I thought I was going to be in a Grand Prix car racing and, and it never quite came through. So to finally have it happen, albeit for only, you know, five races was, was, was somewhat of a, of an accomplishment. I mean, we, we finally got there and, and obviously you wanted it to be a full-time thing. And, and I really thought that I had that going into 2016 um, and was taken aback um, when I got a phone call in February in mid February that that, that wasn't going to happen um, after I, I had a contract and, and was kind of going down that, that path. So um, it was an amazing blessing that, that Michael Andretti reached out and he had this, opportunity of a fourth car which he hadn't had before and it, it all kind of fell together and 
in a super positive way for all of us. And and now here we are um, going into a new season in in IndyCar, and I'm I'm very excited for uh for 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 that opportunity, and and can't wait to to see what we can accomplish. Well, and, and, you know, talk about that a bit because, uh, you know, going into the IndyCar season, I know, uh, you know, you weren't a massive fan of oval racing, but, um, you know, you go into Indy 500, you're, you're a rookie driver, obviously qualifying and things like that, you, you know, you impressed. Uh, you definitely, you know, you definitely were, were one of the front runners. I mean, take us through that, that whole experience. And then, I mean, uh, you know, kind of, I mean, you were, you know, at th- this point, I mean, you know, going into the Indy 500, people knew of you, but you weren't, you know, you weren't like a mainstream name, right? I mean, how, how did things change after that victory? And, uh, you know, and it seems like, you know, then immediately it's like, oh, we got to ink him to a, you know, a long-term contract, get him, uh, get him here in the States, you know, drive an IndyCar full time. Yeah, no, I mean, you're right. I mean, honestly, the, when I went over to Europe initially, you know, I I was told that the, the culture shock would be, you know, a a big thing to overcome. And, And in a way it was almost worse for me coming back to America this year, um, because a lot of people didn't think that I was American, regardless of the fact that, you know, I, I, you know, always had an American flag and was born and raised in California. The, the general fan audience, I guess, because of my last name and, and the fact that I spent so much time over there, didn't think I was American. So it was very strange initially, um, kind of the, the reception and, and the feedback that I got. But then that dramatically shifted um, May 30th, yeah. you know, at 6 a.m. When, 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 you know, obviously the entire world was aware of what would have gone on um for, for the 500 so you know the, the change was was pretty dramatic and i mean it was fortunate that um you know i was able to to have such a good race and, and it was a, it was a good day for us um because it definitely changed my career path in in quite a positive way yeah. Well, and, you know, and I know immediately, you know, things, you know, started looking more long term. And then what was it like midseason last year? I mean, it had to been a little bit bittersweet because I know at some point you got an offer to come back to Formula One, correct? Yes, I did. Yep. Um, yeah. So basically one of the drivers um, that was driving for Manor, he he ran out of funding um, around August time and, and Manor wanted me to, to come take his spot. And at this point we were about almost 70% through the IndyCar season. And, and, um, you know, I had been developing a pretty strong relationship with, with the team and, and also Honda. Um, and, you know, we were already talking about the future and things to come and it, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like that was the place where I needed to be. And I felt that I needed to commit all of my, my effort and time to, to IndyCar and, um, you know, continue to establish relationships and trying to finish out the season in, in a strong way. Um, so that was, that was, believe it or not, a pretty easy decision for me. Yeah. Um, I didn't take a lot of time to think about that. That was, that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and then obviously heading into this year, you've got a, you know, long-term deal with, uh, with Andretti for the IndyCar series. I mean, uh, you know, you feel like, you know, going into 2017, now you got a year under your belt. I mean, you know, you know the tracks now, you know, you've, you know, you've raced the Indy 500, you know, the ovals. I mean, you know, do you feel like this is the year? All right. Now we can really make a run at this thing, put it all together. I, I, yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we as a team had a lot of struggles last year. Um, that was, that was no secret by any stretch of the imagination. So we made the off season. And, and then, like you said, um, me just being able to understand how the series works, what the car needs to go quickly, and, and then above all else, knowing the tracks um, will, will, will play a huge advantage. I mean, obviously everyone else will improve this off season as well. So we've got a, a pretty big gap to overcome, but we've had one test already and it, it was incredibly positive. Um, so I hope that we can continue that momentum forward and into the, the preseason and, and hopefully have a much stronger start to the year than, than we did last year. Yeah. How, how was that? I mean, you, you know, you going from racing formula one cars to Indy cars. I mean, uh, both of them take, I mean, it's a similar skill set, but it's different. I mean, how was that adjustment from driving formula one cars to Indy cars? I mean, was there a big adjustment for you or was it pretty seamless? It was a lot bigger than I was expecting it to be. Um, it, not so much from, from formula one to Indy car. I mean, I was expecting that to be a big difference, but from GP two, which I spent a lot of time in, in Europe, which is kind of the, the, the championship prior to F1 mm-hmm. um, on paper, you know, number wise, the cars are, are basically the same in terms of horsepower and, 
you know, lap time and, and the grip or, or the weight of an Indian car is a bit heavier, but there's more downforce. So, I mean, I was thinking that it'd be pretty much, you know, a, a pretty straightforward um, translation between cars. And that couldn't have been farther from the truth. I mean, because there's so much downforce on an Indy car and, and so much cornering capabilities, um, it rewards a driver who just kind of hangs it out there, if you will. I mean, a, and you counter that with a GB2 car and an F1 car, mostly because of, of the Pirelli tire and, and the tracks that the cars are run on. It rewards very smooth driving and not over aggressiveness and kind of just, you know, point and shoot the car, if you will. Whereas an Indy car is basically as brave as you want to be is as quick as you'll go. Um, and that took a little bit of readapting to also because of how bumpy the tracks are and everything. So it's an Indy car requires a huge amount of confidence to go quickly. Whereas I would say a GB2 car or an F1 car is a little bit more technique um, driven. Yeah. You got to get a little more exuberant with an Indy car and just kind of, kind of hang it out, huh? Just, Exactly. Yeah. Just drive it like an animal and you'll be quick. Yeah. Well, well, that's, uh, I guess would probably transfer over pretty well to race of champions. Cause that's pretty much hanging it all out. Right. Um, yeah, well, it depends on the car I mean, yeah. for some of them. Yeah. But then other ones, like there was this three wheel thing where it was the exact opposite. Like you wanted to drive it as if you were driving your 95 year old grandmother to the hospital. <laughs> like you had to be so gentle and patient and, not do two things at once and i don't know it was it was weird which is why i mean that's such a cool event because you're literally you'll finish one race in a nascar and then you'll get into like a three-wheeled car and then you'll get into a radical and you'll do it all back to back and you'll have to go win and there's only one lap um so i mean it's pretty it's pretty hectic but um a, a whole lot of fun yeah. Well, I got to ask too. Obviously, uh, you know, get a chance to I think drive a, a Rallycross Lights car at uh, at Race of Champions. I know, uh, you know, obviously Andretti. I got uh, friends over there in the Rallycross program. Scott and Tanner. Uh, you know, how's uh, you know you get the itch to maybe uh, test a little bit of Rallycross? I'd love to do it again. Um, the one time that I actually drove it all all weekend, I got stuck with one that had a gearbox problem and it was actually the one scott had in the final yesterday or on sunday in the the usa versus the world and we couldn't downshift um so my experience in the rally car was pretty miserable so I, i'd love to, <laughs> to to get an opportunity to do it again for sure you can get a proper test under your belt <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to phone in, my friend. Uh, you know, congratulations on, no obviously, problem. Indy 500 to contract with Andretti. And, uh, you know, love to love to get you back on air. I know I think I'm going to be doing something out at the Indy 500, uh, some live radio with Impact or something. So maybe we'll have to uh, get you dialed in uh, when I get back to Indy or something. Yeah, for sure, man. Just let us know. And uh, it was great talking to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Alexander. Have a good one. Yeah, Bye. you too. Bye. All right, that was Alexander Rossi, uh, Indy 500 champion. Uh, just getting done with the race of champions down there in Miami. Big shout out to Juan Pablo Montoya uh, for taking the victory there. I know uh, Pastrana uh, he had a pretty good run down there as well, and uh, you know, you know, U.S. team uh, good showing, first time in U.S. soil, definitely good stuff. We're going to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, and uh, we will definitely be back after this break. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. 
Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500 or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The concert that never was. See the Barbara Streisand and Frank Sinatra tribute show Saturday, February 18th inside the showroom at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. I'm going to get out of you. Doors open at 5. Show starts at 6 p.m. Arizona time. Tickets on sale now. General admission just $20 or VIP tickets only $35. Don't miss the tribute to Sinatra and Streisand at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. They're giving away $10,000 in cash every Saturday in January at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. Oh, yeah, I heard. I can earn entries just by playing my favorite machines and then be here on Saturdays for the drawings every half hour starting at noon. And at 6 p.m., one person will win the $7,777 grand prize barrel drawing. 10 k every Saturday. See the club for details. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, big shout out to Alexander Rossi, Indy 500 champ. Always nice to get an Indy 500 champ on your radio show. I mean, uh, it doesn't get much better than that, right? Um, but uh, no, big thanks to him and uh, my friends over there at Andretti Autosport for helping uh, helping me uh, set that up. But um, yeah, I, I can think I may have let the cat out of the bag a little bit. But uh, between this show and Project Action, we will be doing something at the Indy 500 this year. And uh, um, I know we don't dive into the pavement racing a whole heck of a lot. But uh, between the two shows, I think there's some pretty cool interviews and uh, some stuff. So uh, um, I don't know. We're, we're working on something. Might be more of like a Facebook live stream, too. Uh, I don't know. We're working on something there, though. So I don't know. Stay tuned for that. But uh, we might be doing something at the Indy 500. It's a big deal. So, um, there you go. But, uh, I got to, speaking of shout outs, um, here's a guy I've had on air on this show and on project action. And once again, plug that rate, review, subscribe over to iTunes, podcast one.com. Make sure and go over there. Um, all that good stuff. we definitely got some good stuff going on at project action. And, uh, we're going to do a killer clip here in a minute from that show. Um, but to Jason Ellis, uh, Jason Ellis, and I have raced against each other in Terracross, didn't do very good for me and definitely didn't do very good for Ellis either. I wrecked twice. He wrecked a couple of times. It was just not good. Right. But Jason Ellis, he does like racing UTVs. Um, he went out first works race ever this past weekend. He's been running Lucas oil short course. First works race ever this past weekend. He won. Yes. Jason Ellis won a UTV race. Uh, so I got to give a big shout out. I know I sent him a message afterwards, congratulated him and, uh, he was amped. And, um, uh, if he didn't, if they didn't change his serious show to the same time as this now, like I would have him on the air, but anytime I have him on any of my shows now, because their time slot, I got to pre pre tape it. Right. So it just didn't work out, but big shout out to Jason Ellis. I know he's talking about it, bragging it up today on his radio show, but, uh, man, seriously, it's not easy to win any kind of race, but, uh, um, you know, UTV race with the people and competing now and the talent level, like it's insane. So, uh, seriously, massive shout out to Jason Ellis for taking the victory out at the work series. Um, so there you go. We're going to take a short break. We come back. We're going to have a killer clip with Paul Thacker here on the down and dirty radio show powered by Polaris razor. I'm Polaris rider, Lee Valley Valley. And I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality highest performing, most fun machines out there. 
Only one company has taken Levi Lavalley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. So we're going to debut this new segment called Killer Clip here. We're kind of taking one from Podcast One, my friends over there, partners in Project Action. Like I've said before, please rate, review, and subscribe to Project Action on iTunes. You can listen at Podcast One or my website. Just listen. We've had everybody from Ken Block, Travis Pastrana, Jason Ellis, um, Sarah Price, um, Recently, Kurt Yeager, we've had action sports, motorsports. It's a combination of things, a little bit longer in-depth interviews, like an hour long on some of them, but uh, good stuff, definitely worth listening to. Um, but uh, last week was my guest, uh, Paul Thacker. We did about a 30, 45-minute interview, but here's a killer clip with Paul Thacker. Love to welcome my next guest to uh, Jim Beaver's Project Action here, Paul Thacker, snowmobile legend, I guess action sports legend. I don't know. You're just a legend, Thacker. How's everything going, man? Uh, well, thanks. I appreciate that. I may be a legend in my own mind, but uh, <laughs> things are good, man. Just uh, up here in Crested Butte for the last uh, week, 10 days trying to get acclimated to the altitude and get flood style for X games. So, yeah, I know, uh, you know, you kind of, I guess, popped your cherry last year, got that, that X games medal finally. So now you got to come back and, uh, I guess, uh, one up it a bit and go for the gold, right? That that's the gold is always the goal. Uh, I got some pretty tough competition in that department. You know, Mike Schultz is he's pretty darn fast, that guy uh, for an adaptive athlete. So, uh, nothing but respect for, for what he does and brings to the, our sport of adaptive snowcross, but uh, yeah, gold's always the goal, and that's you know we'll give it our best shot. But it was nice to finally. I mean, I competed I don't know four years able-bodied and another four or five as an adaptive athlete, and finally got my first medal. So um, I suppose I can't really feel <clears throat> feel too sorry for myself. I'm sure there's plenty of X Games athletes that have no medals. So yeah. I'll take I'll take I'll take that silver win, lose, or draw any day of the week. Yeah, how is that when you finally get that medal? I mean, that uh, I know I think I, we had you on air I can't, uh, right afterwards onto the onto the other radio show, and, uh, man, you were, uh, I mean, you were pretty amped. But uh, it's kind of, I mean, you know, it's got to be kind of emotional almost, especially, what, you know, with what you've been through in your career and the highs and the lows and everything else, finally get that. I mean, it's kind of kind of like solidifies a lot of what you've done, you know? Yeah, I mean, I would I would have to say that the number one thing that I felt after I crossed the finish line was relief. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a long time and a lot of time, effort, sacrifice, money, all those things that go into racing and doing this stuff for a living. It was nice to finally, finally make it all worth, kind of just brought it all full, full circle. So even though it wasn't, you know, the gold one, I was pretty happy with it. And that was Paul Thacker. Listen to more at Project Action on Podcast One and on iTunes with myself. We'll be back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, after this. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once, but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. 
Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. They're giving away $10,000 in cash every Saturday in January at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. Oh, yeah, I heard. I can earn entries just by playing my favorite machines and then be here on Saturdays for the drawings every half hour starting at noon. And at 6 p.m., one person will win the $7,777 grand prize barrel drawing. 10 k every Saturday. See the club for details. Blue Water Resort and Casino. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. And uh, Hood, I got some uh, some big news. I can't fully, like, I've got a really big news that I know we're probably a couple of weeks out from announcing, but I got some really big news in the, or some other big news in the next week that we'll be announcing, but I signed a helmet deal for this year. Ooh. Not saying who, what, when, where, but uh, I did sign a helmet and hat deal, so my head is officially Why sold can't for... You say who? Uh, because we're waiting for the helmet to get back from uh, the painter, and uh, um, and I'm actually waiting for a boatload of hats to come in the mail. So <laughs> we've got a press release coming out sometime soon. We're actually working on the press release. I'll tell you off air, but I'm not going to say on air. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, you tell me. Um, so I don't know. Pretty pumped on that. Be kind of fun. Um, but uh, yeah. So uh, this weekend, while Hood was jumping monster trucks and. Uh, um, I'm getting ready for my debut race here of the season here in a week in the trophy truck. Supercross is happening in Anaheim and, uh, Ken Roxon decided he was going to become Superman and not in a good way. Oh my goodness. Uh, scary, scary stuff. And I didn't mean that jokingly, like seriously, it was, uh, I don't know. It was bad. Um, it's yeah, I had, like text messages coming from all different ways from my family, from you, uh, from my friends and just like. Horrific, and I, I, you know, I saw a quote from Ryan Denji, and I couldn't agree with him more. And you know, he said he never wishes that on anybody, and you know, the sport and the season needs Ken. Like he was like, definitely on a roll. He was so dominant and so strong, and it's just so so disappointing to see. And you know, and that's a bad break. I mean, any type of compound fracture is is gnarly. I mean, that's tough stuff to deal with. So. I just hope and, you know, give them positive vibes and hope for a speedy, safe, fast recovery, definitely. Yeah, you know, and that was just classy for Dungey. And um, I know the guys from Pulp MX posted something. He's like, man, like when he hit the ground, you could almost feel like the just the air leave the room because everybody knew like the Supercross season was over. Um, and I hate to say that, but, you know, yeah. it, it was – 
And like Dungey, like he doesn't want to take the points lead this way. It's nothing to brag about. Like he doesn't want to win that way. Like, I mean, he was yeah. he was riding really good. He was shot out of a cannon. But um, he, it just I don't know. It's a total bummer. Um, you know, and I know you and I were fans of Roxon. We're fans of Dungey. Like I'm just a fan of Supercross. I like seeing good racing. And yeah. um, I don't know. It's definitely a bummer. And it sounds like it was worse than originally expected. Like it's. Like, it, it, like he's got elbow and like, I mean, his arm is yeah. fractured and like, there's multiple injuries there. Like he said it was going to be multiple surgeries to fix it. I think at this point, like I, I'm not a doctor, but I think he's even questionable for outdoors, you know? Mm, I, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to like jinx anything. And like, I mean, with, you know, the availability of doctors and stuff for somebody like Ken Roxon, you know, he is the extreme and the elite level athlete you know out there and i think that i think he's going to have lots of opportunity to really heal up quick and and if i know ken he's not going to want to sit out outdoors and i think he's just going to do everything that he can to get to get healthy and i know i know ken was ridden injured before but um you know this type of injury also is like is so different than than most again like those compound fractures are and the compound breaks never mind are just uh, they take a lot of time to heal, and you know you risk a lot of um, um, infection, and it's just it's gnarly. So, um, but again, like I do, I do see him coming back for outdoors. It's only you know, Jim. It's just a really, really early into the Supercross season right now. Yeah. So I do think he has lots of time. Yeah, he's got four or five months. You know, I guess if you're gonna have an injury, it, it's this is the time to do it because then you don't miss. You know, you've got a chance to come back for outdoors. You hate to see this like the last round of Supercross or something. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he has a lot of time to recover, and I know that he'll. You know, he has the means to do it in the best manner possible. Yeah, and he was riding like an animal this year. I mean, he, <laughs> he even even this round, I mean, Dungey was shot out of a cannon. And Dungey, this was his race to lose. I don't think Roxon was catching Dungey. But in Roxon's defense, he was coming through the pack like a madman. I mean, he was possessed. Like, it was, mm. it was crazy. I mean, it, it just such good racing. Definitely a bummer. Uh, you got a tip of the cap to Dungey, though. I mean, he he was leading when this happened. Um, you know, he's um, it was going to be close in the points, depending on where Roxon finished the event. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I think we were shaping up for a heck of a shootout. Yo, no, it, it, definitely, and I think Dungey definitely stepped stepped up his game. You know, and uh, it just it's disappointing because we were looking for a, such a you know interesting race season. Like we, I, I thought. Dungey's definitely stepped up his locomotive deal that we always talk about. You know, he's slow and steady, very calculated, you know, can pick up young Ken's weaknesses and really turn it on halfway through the season. And I think that's what we were starting to see. And it was going to make for some great racing. I think the 2017, you know, 450 class was going to be the most, it was going to come down to the wire. Absolutely. It was going to be one of those races to the finish line. Like, and everybody was going to be on their seats in Vegas. And it's too bad. Yeah. Well, and, and two takeaways. One, Marvin was riding at a high level too. He's riding at a high level. And I think if anybody can push Dungey, it's his teammate. I mean, they train together. Marvin knows, like he said, he's like, Dungey was on rails this weekend, but he's like, I train with him. He's like, I'm picking up some of his secrets. I mean, Marvin's riding really well. I I think he's going to take a few wins this year. I don't think this is all game over, you know? No, no definitely. I think it definitely, unfortunately, you know, I hate to say it, but it does open the door for some other guys. Uh, and I was going to say it was going to open the door for Jason Anderson, <laughs> but I mean, I lo- come on, El Hombre. I mean, couldn't you save it for, you know, in the paddock, behind the scenes, the cameras weren't on you to lay it into Vince Freeze. I mean, I know every, okay, I saw, I saw the funniest thing ever. I mean, I am Canadian. I'm not about the politics, but I saw... <laughs> I saw a meme that it said some people don't like some people don't like Hillary Clinton, some people don't like Donald Trump, but nobody likes Vince Freeze. And I just had a little laugh. <laughs> it uh, was really sad. I mean, come on. I mean, the dude is just. I, I'm surprised that he never got pain, penalized. Everybody knows that Vince Freeze rides extremely dirty, and you know, I know that Jason was the one who laid the punch, but also Vince's mechanic was the one who uh, like tripped, pushed, tripped him and. Yeah, like, oh, what a mess. 
But you guys, save it for when the cameras are off of you and not on live television. Yeah. Well, when I, and I posted on Twitter, and it got a ton of likes and retweets and stuff. I said, you know, I feel bad for uh, I feel bad for Anderson. If you're going to get disqualified from a race for a push, at least drop some bombs on the other guy. And seriously, if you're going to get disqualified, you might as well punch him because they called it a punch. That was not a punch. That was like a push. And I mean, it was a lame push at that. Like seriously, Anderson, you know, punch him in the nose. Like knock him out if you're going to get disqualified. Like seriously, make it count. You got disqualified over a push, dude. I don't know. I know. Exactly. <laughs> like it's, it's go big or go home. And I just think that. You think Vince Freeze has it coming for yeah. him the rest of the season? Yeah, well, thing. I don't know how he's penalized. I don't know how people aren't on him for. It was know, a takeout. His, his erratic behavior, and I just think that he needs to pack up and go home. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I do want to talk 250s real quick. Uh, McElrath, my my buddy here, I guess. I've never met him, but we had him on air, so he's my buddy, right? But <laughs> uh, no, Shane, he uh, he took a third, um, still a points leader, ran really, really strong, though. You know, uh, Justin Hill, got to give him credit, taking the win. Plessinger yeah. looks solid this weekend. Uh, so I don't know. We're, I think our battle in Supercross is now going to be 250s instead of 450s. I think we've got a really an epic battle shaping up in the 250, at least 250 West. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of strong riders. It was really good to see somebody else on the top of the podium. I mean, Makarath is a great, great rider, but I, I think it definitely opens the doors now for Plessinger, and uh, I'm stoked for Hill. I, I always knew that he deserved the top spot and I just think I think it's going to come down to the wire I think it's going to be these guys are hungry they are all friends so I think it's going to make for great racing you know they're not afraid to you know bump bars and push each other's in the corners and I I think we're going to see an awesome 250 pick up here like midway through the season I think everyone kind of just needed to get their squeaky ends you know tied up and and uh, it's going to make for a great a great season yep. very heated yeah, I agree. All right, we're going to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. When we come back, new SRT USA driver Patrick Sandell, he is calling in. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount honey they're giving away ten thousand dollars in cash every saturday in january at the blue water resort and casino oh yeah i heard i can earn entries just by playing my favorite machines and then be here on saturdays for the drawings every half hour starting at noon and at 6 p.m one person will win the seven thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollar grand prize barrel drawing 10k every saturday see the club for details blue water resort and casino Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at caseyhighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey. Highlights. 
the Subaru WRX and WRX STI. The 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, waiting on uh, Patrick Sandell to uh, call in. And uh, I don't know, he should uh, uh, should be on the line here any time. But uh, big news for him. He's been around uh, Red Bull Global Rallycross, not since the beginning, but uh, pretty close to the beginning. But uh, just signed a massive deal with uh, Subaru as one of the new uh, Subaru drivers. So uh, definitely a uh, – definitely keep growing. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big deal. This was a big uh, big off season for Subaru. Obviously, I mean, you saw their program in in stage rally with David Higgins and Travis Pastrana and their dominance there. And uh, you know, they've uh, they've had some had some struggles in uh, in rallycross as of late. They took a win a couple of years ago, um, but uh, had some struggles past year or two developing a new car. And, uh, you know, and so uh, they decided they needed an all-new roster of drivers for this year. So they brought in Chris Atkinson, uh, who's European, brought him in. Uh, he's teamed with Ken Block before as in stage route, and then brought in Patrick, who has taken quite a few victories. So it should uh, um, should be a, uh, a darn good season for uh, for uh, Subaru. So looking forward to catching up with Patrick. I'm sending him a text right now, just a reminder. Told me to remind him 15 minutes out, and I reminded him, and uh, – um, he didn't answer and I'm reminding him again. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll get Patrick on at some point. Uh, hopefully, um, speaking of reminders, uh, you know, you've reached a certain level in a friendship when, um, you get a text from a friend at, uh, like 1130 at night. She says, Hey, call me in the morning an hour before showtime. So I call you and it oh. becomes, I'm, I'm your wake up call. <laughs> hey, don't, uh, don't go spilling that out there. Yeah. I'm jumping time zones every other day so I'm, I'm from the east coast to the west coast and west coast to the east coast and sometimes you know i just i need an extra hour of sleep and i just didn't want to be late for the show and sometimes i sleep through my alarm and that's why i set like 20 different alarms but i figured the best bet would be for jim to give me a call this morning <laughs> <laughs> no i think the only time other time you've requested that was at the, throw me under the bus. was at the mint 400 and uh, that was when you and me and renner and uh, Matt Piva, uh, from formerly from Red Bull Vegas, uh, we were having a good time at the Mint, and we had a radio the next morning, and you needed a wake up call from me, and I think I probably needed a wake up call from you. It was, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was uh, one of those days. So, um. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's hard, like jumping. I, I have to actually think about what time it is where I'm kind of from, like when I'm on the East coast, I'm like, okay, what time is it normally for me? Like I, I, I can't even really like wrap my head around it. Cause I'm just used to being on central time. And you know, now I'm, I'm jumping like three hours every other day. And it's like, that's a lot. Like it's, it's a lot when it comes to the, like 12 o'clock at night when it's really three o'clock in the morning and you know, I'm sitting at autographs trying to be alive. <laughs> yeah, It's pretty funny that, you know, how big of a gap it is. No, I, I know just jumping back and forth across the country doing, you know, some announcing and hosting and stuff like that and, you know, plane flights and you're threading the needle to get there in time and, like, you're fighting time zones and up at 2 a.m. one time and in bed at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And it's just like at the end of the day, everything, all these days and nights, they all just blend together and it's like you're just a walking zombie. Like, and then, and when you finally get someplace and you don't have anything to be or do, you crash. Like, you literally, you yeah. know, you're running on, uh, you're running running on Red Bull and then it's like boom done <laughs> yeah you know I've been pretty good on the uh, whole not crashing thing and uh, you know that kind of comes with this job is you know we stay fit we work out you know have a, a, a good diet and I really think that actually helps uh-huh. with being able to jump these time well, zones we got and, Patrick you know, calling in finally oh well there we go let's stop talking about time zones. Right. <laughs> hey what's up Patrick how's it going my friend all good. How are you? Uh, doing, uh, doing well, buddy. Uh, 
Uh, congratulations, first of all, on the big Subaru announcement. Uh, you know, that's a big deal for you. You've, uh, you know, obviously you're one of the front runners in Red Bull GRC, got a few victories, but uh, it's got to be pretty special for you to, to take this victory or to, to sign this deal with Subaru, man. You there, Patrick? Hello. I don't know what is going on today. Looks like, uh, I don't know. Patrick uh, checked out. We're having phone line problems. I don't know what is going on, man, with the phones. Let's see if we can get Patrick to call back in. I don't know what's going on here. We're uh, just having phone issues. Got Patrick Sandell calling in and um, all kinds of issues. So uh, I don't know. Well, uh, here we go. Let's see if this works this time. You there, Patrick? You know. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with the phones there, but uh, um, yeah, congratulations on uh, the Subaru announcement. Uh, you know, it's got to be uh, got to feel pretty good for you to uh, to be signing with Subaru. No, absolutely, it's uh, it's uh, one of the brands and uh, that I always been wanted to represent. Subaru have a fantastic history in motorsport, uh, especially here in Europe with everything they did in WRC and. Watching guys like Colin McRae, Richard Burns, uh, Petter Solberg, Tommy Mackin, and driving those cars like crazy back in the days uh, it was just you know the way I grew up, and and now to be able to represent Subaru myself is yeah just a dream coming true. Yeah, well, t- tell us about these cars. I know you've had some time uh, in them already. Uh, you know, teaming with Atkinson, that's a that's a big deal. He's got some time in the cars last year, but uh, you know, tell us about this new car because I know they've, you know, they, they struggled a couple years ago and they completely rebooted the car. And from what I understand, this new car is really really fast. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when they got Chris in behind the wheel, uh, he definitely showed the potential of the car. And also with Spur and Backy before that, they were they were also doing doing really good. But uh, Atkinson were able to put the car one step higher, and also he he kind of surprised all of us with uh, being P1 in qualifying in LA in the final race. So the car definitely has potential, and uh, uh, it's such a great group behind the Vermont sports cars and how they are working with. Uh, uh, with the team and how they are pushing everybody in Subaru, you know, to be the best they can at all time, and and uh, the atmosphere in the in the team is fantastic. So putting that all together and uh, with what they did with Atkinson in LA and now moving forward, uh, and also for me to be being a part of all that is just fantastic. Yeah, well, and I know uh, you know. What I find really interesting, and I think it's it's a really good mix, is that uh, you know on Subaru stage rally side they've got David and they've got Travis, who both uh, they enjoy stage rally, but they know how to rally cross. And then in rally cross, you've got you know you and Atkinson, who both can stage rally as well. So you've got a good mix of four drivers who can you know you could hop in for David if you had to on the stage rally side or vice versa. And there's four drivers who, who are really capable of of running any of the vehicles in the program. And I think that's really special for Subaru to have. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's uh, me and, and Lance have talked a lot about that. That they actually now have four guys that are able to do both things that Subaru are representing, rallycross and and, and rally and. And we are all four familiar with both type of sports, and we have, you know, we I think we all have the the heart in, in both of those two sports. And uh, you know, if he asked me if I can do a stage rally, I would be I would be the first one to say yes very quickly because uh, my heart is still in stage rally because that's what I grew up doing. And, and if I sometimes get a chance to do a rally or two. That would just be fantastic, and uh, I'm sure we will see both Dave and Travis back in in the rallycross cars at at one point as well, because I know both of them enjoying it a lot. So, yeah, they have they have really a special group put together there that can can do anything that uh, the brand represented. Yeah. So, uh, you know, take us through, uh, you know, the next couple of months up until the kickoff for, uh, for, for Red Bull GRC, obviously you sign with Subaru, lots of testing, I'm assuming, you know, what, uh, what's ahead of you guys? No, absolutely. They have, so from, from the car that, uh, Atkinson was driving at the final race in LA, they have also taken that one uh, back to the shop and, and it, more or less completely we do we done that one as well and they have so many ideas and they have so many things they they want us to test during this off season and uh, and also now with 
with all my ideas how I want the car to behave and and what's what I need to you know to be comfortable to drive fast. They have also added to that mix in combination with everything uh, Atkinson also wants. So we have a lot of new ideas right now from uh, from from Sweden and Australia at the same time that they try to put together in the basket and, and take the best out of. So. They are flat out right now to to put the cars uh, back together, the new, the new cars, and uh, and then testing uh, with the new cars will start shortly, and we will test as much as we can to be as prepared as we can for the first race in in end of April. Yeah. So uh, you know, talking about that, obviously you've uh, you know had a lot of experience with uh, with Ford. You've taken victories there. I mean, uh, you know, you you've got some experience in some rally cross cars that can take wins. I mean, how do those compare to this new Subaru that we've heard uh, we've heard a lot about? Heard it's it's an amazing car. I mean, do you think this year, right out of the box, you and Chris are going to be able to take victories? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, the, the, the vision from from Subaru is very clear. They want to be number one, and and that's always my my goal when I go into a race as well. And and if I if I didn't believe that that I could win in a Subaru, I would never be in this situation. I have 100% trust in the team and and in Subaru as a brand that that if we put this all together, we will be able to fight for the for the podium spots uh, already next year together and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I signed sign on this deal to be able to to bring them a, a victory in the in the championship, and same with Atkinson. So, you know, we we will do everything we can to really fight with the with the Volkswagen boys and the rest, and and really show who's number one. Yeah. So I uh, gotta gotta ask you, uh, you know, doing. Uh, you, I know you go to Europe. You do some uh, winter driving schools. Were you able to do any of that this winter, or was it uh, mostly you know here in the states doing stuff with Subaru? Uh, so I'm I'm back in Sweden right now, and we are I'm I'm fully out flat out with my, with my event company flat out Sweden up here, and we have clients every day doing different type of driving. And uh, right now we have one of the WRC teams are here testing with us now for for Rally Sweden. We have another one coming next week, and we have below zero with Tuckle Porsche that are driving more or less every day. And uh, I can just go on and on about everybody that is here and enjoying uh, the snow and ice right now so we are very busy for the next few weeks here uh, which kind of works out good as as the test program starts in a few weeks so right now i'm uh, i'm spending most of my time on the on the ice tracks which is is good it keeps me busy over the winter and and so i'm you know i'm always driving something and that i've always been my my thing in motorsport that i always try to you know stay sharp all the time and always find something to drive yeah, well, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to call in, Patrick. I'm sure uh, as we get closer to the kickoff, uh, we'll definitely uh, definitely have you back on air again. But uh, uh, congratulations on the new deal with Subaru, and uh, looking forward to seeing you on top of the podium this year. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Thank you. You too. Take yep. care. Yep, you too. All right, that was Patrick Sandell, new Subaru Rally Team USA driver. Uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back. Uh, we got uh, Justin Sipes and Amy Hood uh, on the line. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor.
Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. Justin Sipes on the line. How's everything going, Justin? Hey. Justin, you there, buddy? Maybe. I don't know. He's there. I don't know. Justin, you there, buddy? Hello. You there, Amy? I'm here. I don't know what's uh, what's going on. What did I... I don't hear him. I don't know what's uh, what is going on here. You still there, Amy? There we go. Yeah, I sent him a message. Yeah, you there, Justin? Hello. I have no idea what is happening with our phones today. It's going crazy. I don't know. It's going nuts. He said he's on the line here, so why don't I... Uh... Try calling back in, Hood. We'll see what happens. All right. Here. Have Justin. Justin's all yours. <laughs> you there, Justin? Hello? Hey, Justin, call back in, buddy. I don't know. We're having a massive here uh, problem with the phone lines. You there, Justin? All right, we'll see who uh, who pops back up. I right, gotta love live radio, right? Phone lines go down, and uh, we're just here bouncing around. All right, Justin, you, this Justin, you there, buddy? Yeah, what's up? I don't know, man. We were. Uh, um, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with our phone lines, man. I'm gonna try and pli- I'm trying to get Amy back uh, plugged in here, so hang tight. Um, I don't know what the uh-huh. heck is going on here. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. We lost you. We've been having some problems with the phone lines today, or something. So uh, hold on. It was playing some hoe music, and then it just went silent, and I was sitting there like I don't know if it's what it's supposed to be doing. But all right, we're gonna try and manually punch her in here and uh, see what happens. So if it drops off, then I know I got a problem, and you'll just have to call back in. But uh, sorry about this. Um, uh, we're, we're dialing her right now. We're gonna see if it pops in. She got a new phone. I don't know if that's what's playing tricks on us or what, but uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if she picks up. You there, Hood? Hello. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, you there, Justin? And he goes silent. So this is crazy. This is absolutely nuts. Well, uh, I think I, I think our listeners might want to hear Justin a little bit more than they want to hear me. So why don't I give you guys uh, Justin on the line and then give me a call back? All right, sounds good. This is nuts here. We're having so many problems with our phones. So, uh, yeah. You there, Justin? crazy crazy gotta love live radio man this is uh like i tell you man we got uh, phone lines go down and uh stuff happens here uh stuff happens man uh calling justin manually here and uh, we'll see if we can splice him in um hello justin you there 
Yep. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. We lost Amy, um, so <laughs> it's just you and I for now. Um, but okay. uh, welcome to the show, man. Sorry about that. Uh, I was really hoping to have Amy because I know she had a little trash talk to throw at you, but uh, I don't know. It's, we got phone problems today. I'm sure. She's, she's always got some kind of trash talk. Yeah. <laughs> so how's everything going on this uh, Monster Jam tour, man? I know uh, uh, you guys, uh, you know, kicking things off a couple of, couple of rounds in now. How's, the, how's life been treating you? Current points leader, things got to be good. Oh, yeah. Things are real good, especially after this weekend. It was, it was uh, about 45 minutes from where I grew up, so I had a big, big fan base, a lot of family and friends, and ended up winning both nights. So it couldn't couldn't have got much better than that. Yeah, no, I mean that's got to be pretty special for you, being the hometown guy and uh, coming in, family, friends, like everybody in the crowd rooting for you. I mean that's got to be a big deal. Oh yeah, yeah, we. Uh, my brother's neighbor actually had a bunch of shirts made, so I, we had like 60 people up in this one section all with the same shirts on, so it was super cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, tell me how this. I mean, obviously you got uh, the moto background. You know, how did this whole thing with uh, Monster Jam open up, and, you know, how did these doors open for you? It just, uh, I mean, it was just kind of right time, right place, got in contact with the right people, and, Sent him a resume, pushed up a little track for my brother's razor, uh, and did some driving, and video, he videoed it for me, and I sent it in to him, and then went up to Monster Jam University for auditions, I guess you would call them, and I guess they brung like quite a few people through there, and they hired maybe six, so uh, yeah, at just right time, right place, and right resume, I guess. Yeah, well, take it. Take me through that, you because know, I, you and Amy, right? You guys were at uh, Monster Jam University at the same time, correct? Yeah, we actually auditioned together too, and yeah. then we were we went up there like four more times over the summer, um, and we wasn't together um, every time we went up, but there's a few times we were up there together. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, talk, take us through an event weekend. I know Amy said, uh, uh, you know, she's kind of broken it down over the events, but it seems like you got everybody's number. But uh, I know she's kind of claiming that she, the, the ATVs, that's kind of her deal. And uh, she, she was talking a little trash to Justin. He just can't figure me out over here. So uh, take us through the wow. event weekends and, uh, you know, what's what's going on there, man? You got something in the tank for you holding back? Well, well, just uh, ask her this. Ask her what happened when I got the whole shot. <laughs> and uh half tractor but when i'm behind her she's she's a roadblock that's for sure i can't i haven't figured out a way to get around her without actually just pushing her out of the way i, I don't know what else to do really yeah that's <laughs> she's got the block move down good huh <laughs> yeah she does yes yeah. i've ran into her i don't know how many times but it's working she guards the inside and it's hard to do much else you know, much else with her. Yeah. How's your moto background? How's that transfer over to uh, Monster Jam? I mean, how's that? How's that been? It's it's good. I mean, of course, anybody you know in motorsports that are racers, it's just the you know being competitive is the biggest thing to transfer over. Yeah, the ATVs are they're kind of close, but like I've I've never really rode ATVs other than like a you know like a rancher on a farm. Yeah. But uh. So that I know the concept, but I wouldn't say I'm, you know, super good on them. But it's just I don't know. You can throw it around a little bit like a dirt bike, and and you know you got to judge the dirt like it. But as far as like leaning way over and sitting on the foot pegs through the corners, like I'm not used to all that. That's all I'm learning and getting better each weekend as well. Yeah. Uh, as far as you know, driving the truck, it's. It's completely different. Um, it's, it's kind of the same idea, but you go about it so much different. Like having a steering wheel and rear steer is, I mean, night and day difference from having handlebars. So that that don't translate. It's mostly like the competitive nature of it on the you know the four wheel side. Yeah, well, you know, and and talking about uh, that, I mean, I know monster trucks, man. For, I've never driven one, but uh, you know, f I know how abusive it is in our trophy trucks and stuff like that. But I've heard monster trucks; it just throws you around. Like I heard it's, I mean, it's a workout manhandling those things. Yeah, it's after every freestyle, I'm out of breath. Uh, just 
trying to steer those things. If you, you know, if you ain't going at the right speed, it ain't real easy to turn that steering wheel. And then the whole time you're trying as hard as you can to get back to the pad as quick as you can. And I guess I'm just holding my breath or whatever. So yeah, when I get done, I'm pretty out of breath for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously you guys, uh, you're driving a uh, brand new monster truck. Uh, what is it? Megalodon, right? I mean, how's the, how's the fan yeah. feedback been on that? This is a brand new monster truck. It's debuting with you. I mean, that's got to feel pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's awesome. I get to, you know, make a name for a new truck. And as far as fans goes, everybody's been super pumped on it. You know, there's people that showed up and didn't even know it was going to be there. And they're like, oh, I love Sharks. You know, that's my favorite truck or that's my boy's favorite truck. And then, you know, I, I usually try to ask most people what their favorite truck is. And, you know, they'll say Grave Digger or Zombie or Blue Thunder or whatever. And and then, uh, you know, I'll tell them, well, maybe maybe after night you'll, you'll switch over. And I've had a few, you know, comment on social media and stuff say so, yeah by the end of the night you were their favorite so that's been kind of cool trying to trying to get some new fans you know some uh hardcore fans you know that there's, there's so many hardcore grave digger fans or whatever like i want my truck to be like that eventually yeah yeah there's uh i'm already thinking of lines you can use on hood you like and i feel bad because we got phone lines because she ain't here to defend herself and i'm like man zombies <laughs> bite but sharks bite harder and like there's so many yeah. lines you can use that oh man you could have some fun with this buddy uh oh yeah yeah that's that's gotta be kind of sure. cool though especially like oh man it, like when shark week hits with the discovery channel or something like that you can pull on like it's shark week like oh man you you've got like the yeah. best monster truck for having fun with it and like i'm sure the kids just eat it up right yeah yeah absolutely and <clears throat> just there's some sayings and stuff that that i can bring out and i'm just trying to wait for the the right moments to bring them out and uh but yeah, it's it's definitely cool coming up with the the stuff like that, and and just coming up with a way to build build a fan base. Really, um, that's the goal right now is to get get a good fan base and get some people behind me, and it seems to be working so far. Yeah, well, I gotta ask you, man. Your social media handles, you know, you're Justin Sipes. I've always known you as Justin Sipes. Where does the Poo Sipes come in? How how did you get the nickname, man? Everybody but the racing industry know me as Pooh. Like growing up through school, all my teachers called me Pooh. Uh, the only reason the racing industry don't is because I got to legally sign up as Justin. Yeah. Um, and it came about, well, as far as what they tell me is I was just fat when I was a baby, like Pooh Bear. And then it just kind of stuck. And like, I don't even really like the name <laughs> Justin, you know, just because I've been called Pooh all my life. But yeah. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe once this, this Megalodon and Monster Jam thing, you know, we get going, then we can, we can transfer it in where everybody's calling me Pooh again. Yeah. Everybody's got, yeah, you gotta have a nickname. Every, you know, race car drivers, a lot of nicknames and stuff like that. You just need to slide Pooh back yeah. in there. You know, it's, I know how that is. You yeah. can always tell how long somebody's known you by what they call you, right? Somebody comes up and calls you Justin. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, they, they, they don't know me that long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy. Probably especially this weekend like in the pit party and stuff all these fans are coming through you know getting autographs and pictures and then i got the people that you know i've known forever out there and they keep yelling poo or calling me poo and they're probably you know the fans that don't know are like what the heck why are they calling him poo you know but it uh hopefully we can we can get it where everybody knows me as poo eventually yeah, slide it in there, but uh, yeah. So I mean, what uh, you know? What's what's obviously you guys just uh, kick started the tour. I think you got about what three rounds in now, two or three rounds in. I mean, yep. uh, you know, you guys, uh, you know, what uh, you got any freestyle stuff up your sleeve? You've been working on that you're gonna gonna debut or anything? Uh, you know, any tricks up your sleeve for later on in the tour? Well, I'm 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 working and thinking. I don't, you know, some of the other tours that have you know they've been doing it for a few years and they've actually practiced some some special tricks and stuff up at uh tom mintz's in paxton and i i don't want to do the same thing they do i want to come up with something new i haven't i thought i'd come up with something new and i seen it just the other day but um yeah i gotta come up with something i need to come up with some kind of signature move or something i haven't come up with it yet but it's coming. I mean, we're getting 
more comfortable every weekend in these trucks and it it's going to come we're going we're going to find i'm sure everybody on our tour is going to find something you know that'll be their signature move uh it just hasn't hasn't happened yet yeah when it happens you'll know it right it'll just stick you're like all right there we go that's uh that's yep. it yeah well, that's what i'm hoping anyways Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to call in. Sorry, man, we had the phone line mix up and stuff. We'll get these things dialed in. We'll have to get you back on air, you know, when we got them and have Amy at the same time, and she's texting me as we talk. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to get you guys back on at the same time once a you know, week or two when I get these uh, phone lines dialed in and get you guys really talking some trash out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Justin. Take it easy, my friend. All uh, right. You too. All right. Take it easy. Bye. All right, that was uh, Justin Sipes, uh, Monster Jam driver in the Megalodon, the big shark. I'm digging uh, digging the way it looks. Uh, current points leader on the tour. Uh, we're going to take a short break, come back, wrapping things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood, wrapping things up. And, uh, man, just had some big news there uh, during the break. Uh, I know we've had a couple of phone line issues today. Uh, so apologies to you listeners out there. But uh, I just found out that U.S. Armed Forces Network picking up this show, 500 networks in 177 countries. 
Um, man, if that is not massive, I don't know what is. Wow. Um, really, really, really uh, humbling. So uh, thank you guys for all your support. Um, such a big deal for this show to be able to say that. Um, you know, it's, it's really awesome. So thank you guys for listening in. Thanks to everybody who listens to Project Action. Remember, you can catch that on Thursdays dropping, and then it's all week long on demand. Podcast One Network on iTunes. Please rate, review, subscribe over on iTunes to Project Action, as well as this radio show. Um, got to thank uh, Amy Hood for uh, hanging out with me each and every week. And uh, Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson, Dirtfish, Impact, Terracross, the Blue Water Resort, and Casino. You can follow me. It's at Jim Beaver 15 She is at Amy Hood 71 um, And uh, looking for a discount code on uh, at Dirtfish. Go to G- use JB Dirtfish for a discount code at Dirtfish.com. And uh, once again, rate, review, subscribe uh, to Project Action. We got Winter X Games this weekend. Supercross, the best in Ezra Parker 425 is a week out. And uh, also got Snowdrift Rally kicking off. So lots of racing action coming at you. And uh, we got you covered here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by by Polaris Razor. Thanks for all the support, guys. As always, game on, and we'll see you next week.